All right, welcome back. It is still the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. This time around, we are focusing on health. Uh, just yesterday, uh, the world um, celebrated uh, or marked uh, the World Malaria Day, and there are concerns. Now, experts say malaria killed no fewer than 200,000 Nigerians and afflicted uh, 61 million others in 2021. And the country um, is said to have lost over $1.1 billion. However, the hope of vending malaria, a disease that kills thousands of people annually, received the boost in late 2021 when the World Health Organization approved the use of the first ever malaria vaccine. Now, the vaccine, RTS, that is, or muscarus, is not just the force for malaria, but also the force developed for any parasitic disease. Now, parasites are much more complex than viruses or bacteria, and the quest for a malaria vaccine had been underway for many years. This vaccine was found to surpass the 75% efficacy goal set by the WHO for malaria vaccine to receive a nod. Now, health experts, caregivers, and government officials described the development as a breakthrough in the fight against the scourge that has plagued humans for decades. Now, malaria, which is preventable and treatable, continues to have a devastating impact on the health and livelihood of people around the world. We have Dr. Tui Mebawondu, a public health practitioner, joining us on this particular conversation. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Mebawondu. Justin, for having me. Yes, it is a pleasure. Doctor, it is a very uh, alarming when we see statistics and figures like that. Just yesterday, when uh, uh, the world was uh, commemorating the World Malaria Day, figures were just real that. And from what we hear, 200,000 deaths uh, in Nigeria. How did we get to this? One would have thought that with all of the advocacy, with all of uh, the money and funds being pumped into uh, malaria, that uh, we should have actually been able to bring it under to some extent. So what's going on, really? Uh, it is a shameful repeat that um, um, as, as much as 30-something percent of all malaria cases and deaths occur in Nigeria. In fact, 95 percent of malaria cases worldwide occur in four African countries, Nigeria, DR Congo, Tanzania, and uh, Mozambique. Yeah, that, those are yeah. So um, for all the deaths in um, malaria deaths in, in, in the world, as much as, you know, 25 percent of them, that is uh, for every for one out of four deaths of malaria from malaria worldwide, is in Nigeria. And of course, you, you listed out the numbers and then the cost for us. And here we are. We have small countries like Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, uh, Sri Lanka, el el eradicating malaria. And we are still here trying to battle how to deal with malaria. One, first and foremost, we have, we have not put sufficient um, fund and policy initiative to drive malaria back. Um, um, let's look at it. We have a very weak health. All right, uh, we seem to be having some connectivity issue with uh, Dr. Tui. Maybe we will try and reconnect him uh, uh, on the show, okay? All right, Mercy, let's talk about malaria. It's one illness that um, has actually plagued a whole lot of um, Nigerians, and uh, over time, uh, it seems to have actually been misdiagnosed. Uh, a lot of people, when they have a, a, a little as um, headaches or fevers, uh, they tell you that they get um, malaria even without um, getting the right checks or tests done. And um, they just go about um, prescribing uh, several drugs for themselves. But uh, let's get um, Dr. Tui back. I, I guess he has joined us yet again. Dr. Meba Wondo, uh, thanks for staying with us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I was just explaining that it is shameful that Nigeria contributes as much as one in four deaths of malaria worldwide. And more importantly, um, the most shameful is the fact that 95% of cases of malaria worldwide is from about four African countries, Nigeria, DR Congo, Tanzania, and Mozambique. So why, why, why did we get to this point? One, uh, as usual, we have a flip-flop policy to address critical health challenges. If small countries like Uzbekistan, you know, um, Kyrgyzstan, um, Sri Lanka, Europe, Paraguay can actually eradicate malaria, I mean, reducing the transmission of malaria to zero, what's our problem? Well, first and foremost, I've mentioned clearly that there's a, a policy challenge. The, our health institution is very weak, very, very weak. We have weak health system. Then we have financial challenge. 
you know, and then human resources challenge. Now, if you look at the the, 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 the pillars to really eradicate malaria and turn malaria cases to, to down to zero, we're not doing much. Um, and COVID came, took a, a time, took our time, and, and a lot of us as slum dwellers, poor water supply, sanitation challenge, all this is to have the fact that to deal with malaria has become difficult. And thus, we're losing a lot of children, especially on the five and pregnant women. Mm. All right, so, um, but what, what, what sort of innovation do you think we need to um, embrace to talk about reduction of malaria deaths and saving lives at this point? I mean, looking at the theme for, um, you know, this year. Yes, uh, harnessing innovation to reduce the burden of malaria is apt because what that means is, is now what that is telling us essentially is that there's no one, there's no, there's no silver bullet to dealing with the challenge of malaria. We have, you know, let's look at it. First and foremost, we need to do an environmental control and vector control. We need to drain our water, cut our bushes, and ensure that, you know, the vector that actually breeds by the mosquito is properly controlled. The indoor residual spray and outdoor spray has to actually be raised up. And we, we have to embrace sanitation and uh, hygiene. That is key. Um, the other thing is that we want to deploy a uh, central treated net. In such a way that all of the five are pregnant women sleep under the net. The net has suffered a lot of setback in distributions and penetrations anywhere in, the, uh, anywhere in Nigeria. That's another issue. The third thing is about the drugs that you want to use to treat malaria. We're seeing a lot of resistance to also about even the atomizing combination therapy that we're used to. Um, and people just use them haphazardly in such a way that we are now having difficulty in actually treating malaria from the simple drug that we know that is there. And then the drug is expensive, it's, you know, because now if you have to treat malaria, you are talking about three thousand naira minimum if you have to purchase the drug outside. And then that three thousand naira is a lot of money to some people when they have an episode of more than five, six, seven malaria uh, uh, per year, or even sometimes you know one or two in a month. So, um, and then surveillance, we're not doing sufficient surveillance to look at that, where are we? In fact, we're not pushing what I call bold, hairy, audacious goal to drive malaria uh, figure down in Nigeria. Um, what we see is, since we're still stuck at um, control of malaria, at least trying to figure out how malaria will not be a public health issue. It's not, a, it's not now a public health issue. We have not moved to that pre-elimination elimination and eradication. We've not really done those kind of boosters. Good enough, we have vaccines now. We, vaccine is one of the tools that is available now, especially for under five, where you know we have three doses and the fourth dose after some time, which can now be used to reduce the, the, the severity of malaria, especially P. falciparum, which is actually uh, causing most of the death. So we have the vaccine. We have to actually um, step up our environmental vector control, um, indoor residual spraying, outdoor residual spraying. We have to raise the drug and diagnosis methodology because now, even malaria is diagnosed or harmed now. Nobody even tried to do uh, what we call uh, thick blood film or all, all those things. So we have to put all those instruments together if we want to uh, get something from malaria, we really reduce malaria episode. All right, Dr. Mebondo, last year the world was celebrating when uh, there was the talk of um, the RTS, the RTS, and of course uh, one would have thought that that would have been the way forward in you know, a vaccination you know, for this particular illness. Uh, what's the situation as we speak? Uh, let's uh, relate it, uh, bring it um, down home. Uh, are the vaccines available here or what exactly is going on as regards um, getting people vaccinated you know, from malaria? Um, thinking about Nigeria, we're looking at the third quarters of this year to see whether we can get some of those vaccines and then deploy them. What, what is important is that, you see, if you may have a very efficacious, efficacious product that, that is not efficient, if the, if the, if the vaccine works so well, don't forget, vaccine can only work, can only have the desired effect or become efficient when you can deploy the vaccine effectively. That means that you have a whole chain of things to think about bringing the vaccines, maintaining the cold chain, or whatever case, and then deploy the vaccines to the remote areas, give it to people that are still need it, and dealing with challenges of um, vaccine assistance and all those stuff. So it, it, it's involved in a lot of things. It goes beyond just discovering the vaccine and saying, that, okay, I have a vaccine that now works. But you have, to, you have to make the vaccine work. Yes, the vaccine works, but you have to make the vaccine work. So vaccine is one of the tools which you can be incorporated into the 
uh, expanded program of, of immunization, and then can be deployed with, say, like polio vaccine, like measles vaccines, and then taken down to um, the remotest corner of Nigeria. But having said that, note that it will cost money, it will cost human resources, it will cost proper planning to ensure that these vaccines get to where we want the vaccines to get to. So, and that is the thing. And when you look at Nigeria broken health system, 30,000 primary health care centers all over Nigeria, less than 6,000 of them working, no funding, no human resources. And then um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mess, but we need to do more. We have to rely on our partners to provide money, to provide, to provide training and human resources to deploy those vaccines. I hope that it's just another instrument in our kitty to deal with this kind of malaria. We hope, I hope we use it well. So, so on this particular, I mean, it's a week for it. And so uh, what would be the call to all of the stakeholders, government inclusive, uh, you know, the health sector as well, including individuals? Yes, ask local, ask local. You see, we need to drive the community participation in our malaria eradication. What, what is a community? The community is not just one tiny village in a remote area of Ilela or in a remote area of uh, Lagos. A community means that church, mosque, religious institutions, faith-based organizations, NGOs, CSOs, we need to really use them indeed to drive down the proper campaign against malaria and appropriate use of even anti-malaria. Now imagine uh, in one of the, uh, during this period now, during the period of fasting and even Easter that just ended, and during one of the sermons or uh, exhortation for the, to the people, the pastors or the imams then start speaking about the beauty of sleeping under his inside net and just putting it and using their own influence to drive the, the campaign um, against malaria. That would be nice. We need to find a way to act locally. We need to increase the education. We cannot just reduce malaria campaign to 25th of April every day. And then when the time, when malaria bites somebody, it's killing people. It's shameful that one out of four deaths in the whole world, in the whole wide world, from malaria and Nigerians. It's very shameful. I think we need to do something about it, but it remains to, to be seen. What exactly can we do right? What exactly can we do right? Maybe this is, this is going to be an exception. All right, um, Dr. T. Member Wondu, uh, thank you for all the thoughts that you have shared on them. Um, you know, malaria, the enlightenment, and of course, advocacy, and what we need to be doing and to save ourselves from this embarrassment, like you have um, called it, so that way Nigerians don't have to start uh, treating malaria almost uh, twice every other month. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. All right, uh, that's um, the size of the show uh, for today. Uh, we must say a very big thank you to all of you who have sat back to watch. And of course, I trust you have been able to learn one or two things as regards uh, what you need to do concerning malaria because it is an ever-present issue, almost something that everyone can relate with. The show returns again tomorrow. My name is Justin Akadoni. And I am Messable Paul. And if you missed out on any part of the conversation, that's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel as a Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.